Shalom, Ahab, La Baraka. In other words, peace, love, and blessings. First and foremost, Double honors to all the elder apostles and prophets, the teachers of Great Millstone, bringing out the 100% truth. Also, salutations to the sincere Akiyam Wa Akwath coming into the 100% truth. Um, I made a mistake. I was I brought out a class yesterday about the the yard gnome eats pork, but um, I said that Hannah and the five sons. It's Hannah and the seven sons, which is really an important story. And somebody made a joke saying that I'm not a great reader, which it's not really a joke. I'm not. But I do want everybody to hear the story of Hannah and the five sons. So, let's get it. And today's reader is going to be... It's going to be GMS Sound of Apocrypha 10 years ago. This is, this, this is from 10 years ago. 2 Maccabees chapter 7. And this is going to be Hannah and the Seven Sons. Let's get it. Today we're going to read the second book of the Maccabees chapter 7. Now this is 2 Maccabees chapter 7. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. But one of them that spake first said thus, What wouldst thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, The Lord Yahweh looketh upon us, and in... Let's stop for a second. They say he cut off all of his members, and while he was still alive, they threw him in a hot skillet. <coughs> they cut off all of his limbs. Okay? Just because he wouldn't taste the swine's flesh. And you can see the yard gnome right there, too. Let's get him. Just because he wouldn't taste the swine's flesh, they chopped all of his body parts off. And while he was still alive, they cast him into a frying pan. You, you out there soaking your swine's flesh in Coca-Cola for two days to let everybody know how great it is. Let's get back into it. <coughs> Have comfort in us as Moses and his song was witness to their faces, declared, saying, and he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead after this manner, they brought the second to make him a mocking stop. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Wilt thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of... So the second son, did you hear what they did? They scalped him. They cut the skin right off the top of his head and pulled, they peeled back his skin and his head. Well, I mean, his hair and his skin, so you could see his scalp. So, um, the Europeans actually created that shit, too. They called us savages and said, we're, they're out there scalping people. But, honestly, they were killing us. They were raping our wives, murdering our children, and they were scalping us, honestly. This goes all the way back to the Maccabees. These... These um, these Europeans, these Romans, these Edomites, they have no remorse. So we started scalping them back at a certain time um, over here in the um, in the Americas, and they called us savages for that. <laughs> Imagine that they can do it, but if somebody else does it, you're a savage. It goes like 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 if a if a black girl braids her hair, there's some braided hair right there. If a if a black person braids her hair, it's ghetto. But when an Edomite does it, it's high fashion. 
Wow. Wow. So when a European scalps you, it, it's, uh, it's because you're a savage. But if you do it back, I can't believe these savages. So no matter what, it's a lose-lose situation for us. Um, let's get back into it. Like body, but he answered in his own language and said no. Wherefore, he also received the next torment in order, as the former did. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, Thou like a fury takest us out of this present life, but the king of the world shall raise us up, who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. After him was the third made a mocking stop, and when he was required, he put out his tongue, and that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, and said courageously, These I had from heaven, and for his laws I despised them, and from him I hope to receive them again, insomuch that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage, for that he nothing regarded the pains. Now when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, It is good being put to death by men to look for hope from Yahweh to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. Afterward they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men, thou art corruptible, thou doest what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of Yahweh. But abide a while, and behold his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. After him also they brought the sixth, who being ready to die said, Be not deceived without cause. For we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against our, our power. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. But think not thou that takest in hand to strive against Yahweh, that thou shalt escape unpunished. But the mother was marvelous above all, and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits, and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you, but doubtless the creator of the world, who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things, will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again, as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised... And Did you hear how many precepts were in there? First of all, she was, um, she was, in, um, when, when she was in good estate after her um, sons had died for the Most High. And that goes, um, um, Sirach chapter 2, KJV. And then also, and um, Matthew, I think it was, uh, Matthew chapter 24 also. So let's get Sirach real quick. I just got to bring this out because what he said, let's go back a little bit. With a manly stomach, she said unto them, Right here, escape unpunished. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Right there, yeah. she bared it with good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. So it says. Set thy, this is 2 Maccabees 2 and 2. I'm sorry, um, I, I repent. I mean, Salakia, Salakia. Uh, I repent. <laughs> it 
It says Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and 2. Set thy heart to right, constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. She did these things correctly, scripturally correct, but there's more. So, hey, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world, who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things, will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again, as he now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, Let's get it real quick, guys. We got to get this really quick. I got I to gotta get this because this is really important. So, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So, the mother and the seven sons. This is all, I'm sorry, this is Matthew 16 and 25. Let me read it again. Matthew 16 and 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So how, So what happened? So they lost their life for the sake of Yahweh. Because the law clearly explains that we are not to be wrapping our lips around pork. Now these people, the Hannah and her seven sons, they clearly knew uh, the law. And... They refused, so they refused to save their life by eating pork. They, they refused to save their life by eating pork. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Losing your ticket into the kingdom. This life right here don't matter. This is, this is not the life that's talking about. So you're losing your, your place in the kingdom. So any yard gnomes should know that if you're going to be out teaching a word. But uh, it really got under my skin, I guess, this whole pork thing. So let's go ahead and finish this out. I had to bring out a few scriptures because everything he's saying has precepts to it. So anyway, let's keep going. Whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man if he would turn from the laws of his fathers, and that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this manner. O oh my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, and consider that power made them, of, made them of things that were not, and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death, that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will, I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the, of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou that hast been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of Yahweh, for we suffer because of our sins. 
And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of Yahweh. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the Almighty Power, who seeth all things. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, are dead under Yahweh's covenant of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment of the Most High, shall receive just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching Yahweh that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou, by torments and plagues, mayest confess that he alone is the Most High, and that in me and my brethren the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon all our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handled him worse than all the rest, and took it grievous, grievously that he was mocked. So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all, after the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feast and the extreme tortures. That's the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 7. Yahweh Shem Yahushai, Barakatham. And as always, Double Shema. So, that is what everybody's talking about when they tell you the story of the mother with the seven sons. So when you're out there and you're you're and you're, and you're out here and, and you're just eating up all that pork. Oh yeah, I'm not letting up on you. Nope. You're gonna you're you're gonna the problem is is there's no turning back for you. We all know that you're gonna die. And you're not gonna be received in the kingdom. And you're trying to take everybody with you. That's the weird thing. Why repent? That's your option. That's your only option. And um, I got one, 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 one thing, one thing, because th this goes right into every time I bring out Revelation uh, 22 and um, 12. And this is exactly why. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12, KJV. This is why in this class, every time like this, it said, he said, that, that she said, whosoever um, will lose his life for my sake, that same shall be saved. He's going to lift him up. She said, it's better for you to die in the name of Yahweh than to, to live and disgrace this family. She even would rather her kid keep the law and then she said, we can be reunited in the kingdom. I'll see you in the kingdom. Let's get this real quick, though. I've got to end every class this way. And this is uh, the King James Version, Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, I come quickly. The reason why I keep reading this verse is because he's on his way. He's coming, and it's going to be a lot. Once he gets here, it's going to be like, oh, man, I didn't even know. I didn't, I didn't have time. I, I, I'm not even right. You're going to be one of the foolish virgins. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Watch out, people. Watch out. There will be many false prophets coming in his name. And, and, and they're going to tell you lies. I mean... Some of these lies you should just know. Like this guy, you should just know. So now you understand how serious we took um, pork eating in biblical times. So when we see people eating pork these days, it reminds me of those seven sons and their mother that gave their lives. They died for his sake. They didn't. They didn't try to. They didn't try to get their lives saved. They made all kinds of deals and proclamations. You'll be my best friend. Everything. Just have some pork. He got mocked. So with that being said, I hope you were able to get something out of this message. Shalom.